3.31 a.m. And it's a mess, but it's also time for these two to be shipping out. Okay. days till we're officially supposed to be out of the other house? Uh, let's see. Um, I'll count. I probably don't even look. Are we counting today as one of those days? Sure. Six days if you count the day we're moving out. Six days. So I think Mike and I realized this morning that we're not going to have, we're not going to push anymore to make sure this house is ready for us. And you say, but what can you do? What are you going to do then? Well, like, uh, my brother is actually leaving town for like three weeks with his family. And they said we can stay there while they're gone. And that helps them because we can take care of their cat. And obviously it gives us a, a, just a little bit of a break. Because I wanted to just see if we could do it. And just, I think we both, I say I, but we both wanted to see, like, can we just push and just get in there? But... Last night at like one in the morning when we were going to bed and my body is just so exhausted. I'm like, I don't, it's not worth it anymore. I can't keep pushing the way we have been for the last three weeks mm -hmm. for another five days. So that doesn't mean we're not gonna keep working. It's just, we're not gonna be like in this craze, like thing, we can't, we have to get these things done. So we will be able to slow down just a bit. Um, but I'm going to go right now with Mike over there. He's going to clean up. You're going to, you well, want to mop the room. Right? I want these bedrooms to be clean because we can start moving stuff in there because those are painted as much as they're going to be and they're ready for the most part. So I want those to be clean. And um, I want to uh, start unpacking the kitchen. I think our room as well. We yeah. can do the same thing. So I'm going to start unpacking the kitchen. I just realized we never edged the roof ceiling in here. It was just while I was standing here talking to you guys. Oh. So we might need to do that. But um, I think some of this painting we stopped on because we knew once these walls came down, we, we were going to have to paint it anyways. anyways. That was part of it. But I can unpack the kitchen and start putting things actually away in the cabinets and start making some space in the other warehouse. And uh, yeah. So we're going to do that real quick. And um, then I think we'll probably have to go home and get lunch. It's just like a constant... Um, it'll be nice when we can move the fridge over here so that we don't have to go home to do that. But. Mm -hmm. Without thinking twice And I knew it would catch up And that we would be the ones Left behind The stories I've been told They never seem to leave my mind Ooh, And this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some Okay, I have put what I have up on the shelves so far. I'm very, very happy. I think open shelving is so smart and it's historic and it's trendy, but I think it's so smart because um, cabinet doors hide things, but you can put the things you need to hide down here. And this is so easy for things you're grabbing all of the time. Um, so I did get rid of my mismatched dishes. They're like, um, 
right here. They're actually going to the thrift store. I just had like lots of different, but it was time. They were all chipped up anyways. I got these from Amazon Basics. I'll put a link down below because that's a good size bowl. We measured it. It holds, I think, two and a half cups. And these are plastic, but look really good. These are the thrift store for a dollar each. I think they're really cute, the fluting. And then I got some other ones at the thrift store, which are still in the house. I can't, I must have one or two more kitchen boxes. But here's the thing, you guys. You'd say there's not much counter. I mean, there's not much cabinet space in here, but I think it's super usable because I haven't even hit, like I have so much space still. And I felt like at the other house, there was tons and tons of cabinet space, but it was stupid because a lot of the times it wouldn't, wouldn't have a full shelf there. And I get it. That's nice maybe in one cabinet, but most of the time it was just completely empty space with things at the bottom. So I think we're gonna be just fine on cabinet space for that sort of thing. So I will use this cabinet and this cabinet for food storage. Sorry, this drawer needed to be re-glued. The joints were kind of weak in between here, so it's being re-glued. Yeah. But, um, and the only thing I don't know about with food storage right here is you don't want to come in the front door of someone's house and be able to look over, because this wall won't be here, and see like all their food storage. Um, so I might put some, you know, paper back here, wallpaper or something for now. And then when it's not for food storage, but for something else, I can take it out. Um, but I'm very, very optimistic about this kitchen. This will be really helpful because we'll put the toaster and our cocoa maker or coffee maker thing there. We make cocoa with hot chocolate with a coffee maker. And, that, and then also it'll be another prep place because the fridge will be here. So people can go just like prep a sandwich or something over here and then go to the table. And then I do wonder if eventually we're gonna want like a rollout island, ah, tripping over things, that could pull out into this space. I don't know yet. Um, but you know, this would be my prep space for dinner. So we'll just see, it'll be very interesting. Very interesting, but I'll be able to, I'll have my spices very accessible, my cutting boards, all that good stuff. Cabinets going up. Okay. Um, is it lined up with the same? Okay, we got to make nope. this bit a little bit. Yes. Good job. There you go. Okay, you got it, everyone? Can you hold it there? Can you hold it where it is? Well, I mean, it's not exactly lined up. You need it exactly lined up. Okay, so the boys came. Mike put a, a board up here that we'll paint so it can rest on that. It can hold some of the weight all the way up to the ceiling. And now he's going through some of the... There's some support wood in through the back here and he's now attaching that to the wall. So it'll be very secure because not only does it need to hang on the wall, but it needs to be able to have kids opening and closing it. Possibly climbing it. No, oh no. <laughs> okay, it looks awesome. Okay, it's up. The boys went home and now Mike is putting up the kitchen light. Attempting. Okay, well, you have to attempt it to get it done, right? Yeah, we'll see. Well, I love the way this looks. I will be painting that board the same color as the wall. Uh, I think it'll be a cute spot for like a toaster or something. Time has gone and I grew up. I somehow made it through without losing sight. Mm -hmm. And I still wonder where you are and if you found a way. Hey everybody. All right, we're starting another day. Um, we have a trailer today. Um, so we're gonna move as much stuff as we can with the trailer today. The real reason I actually got the trailer was to go get the beams that we need to go up in the attic to um, you know, create the framing up there to remove that load bearing wall. And so that, this will be helpful for that because they're 20 foot beams and I just, can't really put them in the back of the, the van, but I thought, well, while we have the trailer, we might as well do some loading and moving. So we're loading up stuff in the back of the van. We got all the beds taken apart. And um, and then we're just gonna load up any larger items. Dad? Yes. Where should I put this? Um, just set it down here for now, and we'll, probably, we'll put it back in the dresser when it comes down. We've got a couple more dressers to go, or maybe one more. 
And then, you know, like I got the refrigerator there, some wheelbarrows, some bigger things that you just don't want to put in the back of a van. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And everyone is chipping in. Elijah's off. I don't know if we talked about it, but Elijah had an ingrown toenail. And so we had to get that taken care of a couple weeks ago. And he went, he's just going in today for his um, checkup on that. But uh, today's the last day of Elijah and Daniel being um, home before they head off tomorrow morning on their missions again. Uh, so I figured I might as well use them as, as much as I can. So that's part of the reason I got the trailer because I've got their, their muscles still here and they're, they're good helpers. So good thing I got these strong boys to help me. Their young bodies can handle all this work better than mine can. Good job. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Woo! Impressive. Okay, so put that in the trailer and then put the drawers back in it, okay? So we can carry it with the drawers in the trailer. I'm gonna check and see what other big things we have left. Oh, there's some more beds. Okay, these boys are bringing this out. Okay. We got a corner thing there. We got all our mattresses, but the mattresses are actually gonna stay tonight because we're spending one more night here. And there's a bunch of junk that I'm not even gonna show because it's just a pile of junk. These two are gonna show off with their strong. You might need to go, you might need to tip it the other direction. Or can you make it around that corner? Yeah, why don't you tip it the other direction? Carry it like that, it might be easier. Learning your moving skills, it's important. How about you, Eve? Are you learning new skills in moving? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. You gotta go slow, Asher. The person on bottom is carrying most of the weight. So you got quite a bit of furniture to go. Wow. Wow, that is a cool trick. Lunch time now. We got hamburgers and hot dogs going on. Just trying to eat through the last of our food. I mean, you don't have to completely do it, but it would be helpful if we have to move. It's easier not to move stuff. So, um, we're eating. I'll show you the trailer. This is load number one. And then the back of that has a bunch of beds in it, uh, red frames that are taken apart. So, this will be our first load. Okay, we're making progress. We unloaded some stuff at the house. Time to unload the rest of this stuff here at the warehouse. All right, we're at the lumber yard here picking up our big LVL beams that are gonna go in the uh, in the attic. So this is the easy part because they've got a forklift, which I'm not gonna have at the house, but they're gonna be hanging off the back of this thing a little bit. set those inside and we'll be good all right it's in ready to go i don't have any like flag things to put on the end i hope that's okay but we're not going too far so time to head back safety first Mike's going to cut the second one, and then we're going to put them in the Those can just go through the front door. Huh? Once we get it through, we'll need to start taking it. Um, Take the towel down. <laughs> Super heavy, yeah. When you're in They're big, but they're just huge. When I stood there and watched them, I felt how heavy. Here we go. Grab on. You got it. Yep. Do I just go back? Here we go. Yeah, I think just 
take it up into the attic? Well, I can, I'll go in there. If you want to hold it for a second, I can come in. Okay. I'll help you out a lot. Right here. Okay, so, Andrew, why don't you back up? Grab it now, you hand it to me. You back. Elijah, actually, wait, 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 stop. I'm going to come up here, Elijah. If you can maybe support the middle or come up the ladder a little bit, and then kind of feed it up to me. Daniel, you go down lower. You maybe hold it differently so you don't have to squat. <laughs> You're doing the limbo. <laughs> Here's the reason number 35, why you should have a big family. Lots of helping hands. I may need to be tall. I was like, <laughs> I'm really happy that's working. Yeah. We first off, we were gonna have to cut a hole in the side of the house over there and bring it in that direction, but. We happen to have a window a directly shot. right there, yeah. A little sweaty, working hard. It's hot up there. It's hot in that attic and not in the sun, but. You're gonna have to swing around. Dang it, swing it all the way around. Here, Elijah. Hang on a second. Here, ooh. Just to turn it, it, turn it up. It's actually easier. What's that? No, turn it like vertically, so Dad can walk through the doorway with it instead of flat. Oh, okay. Hang, let's go. No, it'll be easier that way. Okay, okay, I'll stay out of it. So wait, am I going up? Uh, sure. We probably should just. Want me to go up? Sure. Or like, uh, no, 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 let me go up. Here, Henry, Henry you go down out. there. Oh, okay. I'll go there. Henry, you go down there. Because I know where to step up here. The rest of us might just fall through so the kinda, ceiling. No, yeah, no, yeah. Like we did before. I'll just stand right here. Just go slow. Okay. So right these there. will run from here to there. What we'll do is we'll, well, I can't do it right now because it's too heavy, but we'll put them on end, nail them together, uh, excuse me, and then strap them to the, where these, these joists come together with some metal strapping. And then we'll take, um, it's really hot up here. Some, I know, it's gotta be like 105 degrees. We'll take uh, two by fours like these and we'll just, we'll run it. We'll do some on this side and some from the other direction. I might go up or we could just go down. It's really for lateral support on this. Dude, it like feels like a complete literal sauna up here. Like, like you're at the gym and you're sitting in the sauna. So we're having, we saved a lot of money. Oh, let me show you. We saved a lot of money by keeping this wall here because then we could just do a beam section here. Well, and it wasn't even actually about money saving and forgot. What it meant was the beam, if we had it go the whole way, it would have been an 18 inch beam. So that when we added the second story on, we'd have like all this dead space because we have this 18 inch beam in between the front and the, the first and the second floor. So we had a more reasonable size beam by putting, keeping this post here. They actually weren't expensive, but um, also we didn't, we didn't, when he proposed leaving this here, we didn't mind. And you may, I, I might have already said this on here, but we were feeling pretty stressed about the kitchen ending here. We needed more wall space in the kitchen. And so we'll just be able to use all of this as wall space in the kitchen. And we needed that. So uh, we didn't mind doing it. Just drop up the trailer. Got, um everything we could today, which wasn't everything, obviously, but it was more stuff. This is the messiest move I've ever done. <clears throat> um, but I wanted to throw something in here that's off off um, today's topic, but we've had, we had some comments on our recent video, a couple of videos ago, I guess, where uh, Megan and I were talking in the car, and um, we had people complaining about Megan talking over me or interrupting me and that's been like a, a common theme and then that sort of like builds and people assume things about 
Megan being overbearing and um, like kind of bulldozing the family or, or I don't know what, just sort of this, there's this picture that's been painted by some people and I know it's actually about, not by most people, but by some people who watch and um, and I wanted to say something about that because I figure if, if, I, if I don't say anything about it, then maybe people won't understand that that is completely off base and not true in any way. Uh, as far as how Megan and I talk and communicate, um, Megan does, she does jump in while, while we're talking and while I might be saying something, but I, it's, we've been married for 20 years and that doesn't bother me. I don't even notice. Um, and so it's, it's not an issue for me. I don't, it doesn't bother me. It, I don't, I have no problem with that. And I don't think it's her being a jerk. It's just, she's a quick thinker and um, she's a quick talker. And that's just the way I'm a little bit slower thinker and a little slower talker. <laughs> so naturally she kind of jumps in when there's a, maybe there's a pause or maybe um, I'm not explaining something in, in, in a certain way. And, and I really have, I have no issue with it. And it isn't a sign of any type of uh, failure on her part or a, or a breakdown in our relationship. It's just kind of how we operate. So that, that I hope you can see that, that that's not an issue. And, and if you're, worried about that or you're bothered by it then you are welcome to go and, and well to not watch our videos I if it bothers you that much I don't know why you're sticking around anyways um, in fact I, I invite you to go and, and, and not watch our videos because that we, we prefer not to have that type of negativity um, and and as far as Megan's personality in general she's a she's a strong person um, but that doesn't mean that there's any bulldozing or any um, like overbearingness on her part. Um, I, I hope that everyone who watches understands that the amount of time you see of us is 20 to 30 minutes out of either a day, like a 24 hour period, period or even days, plural. So you're literally seeing a fraction of a fraction of our time together because Megan and I are constantly talking, we're constantly discussing what we're doing for our family, we're constantly going over things and making decisions together. And so we are, we are partners. I, I would say we are very equally yoked partners in how we operate. Um, but for some reason there's this perception that, that Megan is, is just kind of takes over. Um, but that's not the case. She might be the one who says what we're doing, but um, we are, we're, very much uh, attached to the hip when it comes to making decisions for our family. Um, and so I, I really want to put that to rest. And I probably have to say this again at some other time, but we are very happily married. We have a very happy family. I hope that's pretty obvious. Um, and it is in due large part to Megan and, and the way that she is uh, my partner in life and also uh, the mother of our children. Megan is the heart and soul of our family and I am blessed beyond words to have her in my life and to um, to benefit from, from her strengths which there are many and I'm, I'm constantly impressed by what Megan does and, and her abilities. Um, she is she is the one who who notices when when our kids need something or there might be something emotionally going on um, and she is the one having the hard conversations with our kids when there's issues. Um, we don't obviously show that on the channel because we're not about showing, uh, you know, any family drama, so to speak. You know, that's, we want to protect our children and protect our relationships in that way so that's not on display for everyone. But uh, obviously we're a family, so everybody, people have their issues and people have problems. and. Um, if there's anyone who's solving it, it's usually Megan because she's the one who's, who is, she is an amazing counselor um, for me and for our children. She is so good at sitting down and helping them kind of sort through whatever issues they might be having. So if, and also there's this, there's this weird idea that Megan is absent from our children's lives. She is so involved, but we just don't show that on camera because we're not, we didn't, we're not interested in, and displaying kind of the things our kids go through that are are private and are their own business for everyone to see. So please, 
I, I know that 99% of our viewers recognize that, that Megan is a, is a powerhouse and is an amazing person. But if you don't understand that or you're somehow putting together uh, little clues that you think you're seeing and putting them together incorrectly, I wanna, I wanna nip that in the bud right now, although it's probably beyond bud stage, um, and, and just tell you that you need to stop because Megan is an amazing person and even amazing people are hurt by neg negativity that comes in and by comments that um, are, are cutting, you know, and are questioning her and her mothering and her, her role as, as a wife um, or as a person. And, and those things do hurt. And I'm, I, I really, it pains me to see that. I, I don't like, I really hate those comments coming through um, when they do. Um, I'm not a confrontational person, so I don't typically jump on the comments and jump in and, 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 and you know, like call people out on that. I probably should more, but um, if you're wondering and if you're, if you're one of those people who thinks that they've seen something that isn't there as far as um, any negativity or whatever personality flaws in Megan, uh, you're seeing the wrong stuff. And I think you're just seeing something that you want to see and because you obviously have some other issues in, in your life that are causing that. Um, but I, I, I would encourage you either to change your perspective and take my word for it that I am, couldn't be happier to have Megan as my wife and, and the kids love their mother. She is a magnet of our children. They're constantly gathering around her and, <laughs> and seeking for her help or for her counsel. Um, and uh, so if you can't see that, then I invite you to, to, to not watch our videos anymore. <laughs> because if, if you're not, if, if you think that Megan is a bad person in some way or you don't like it, then please go watch some other channel, someone you might agree with more. Um, but as Megan's husband, I wanna protect her. And I, I want you to know that she's an amazing person. And yeah. We couldn't, we are, our family is blessed exponentially by Megan. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm back home and our last meal with these two, I shouldn't say last, but last meal for a while. It's the final day. We're getting pizza. They, they, the boys are leaving right when we're moving. So <laughs> not that I, I'm not gonna say we wouldn't got pizza anyways, cause we all love this pizza. And I, I don't know, it's not a bad last meal, right? You can't get, Alino's Pizza anywhere else. Yeah. Right? So it's nighttime now, and um, uh, so it's Elijah and Daniel's last night for a while at home, because they're leaving early tomorrow morning to go back out, or for Daniel to go to the mission field the first time, and for Elijah to go back out. If you missed it, Daniel was originally called to go to the Canada Montreal mission, but they reassigned him temporarily to Leighton, Utah Because he can't get into Canada right now And then Elijah had been in Japan for a little bit, but came home because of the pandemic and now has been reassigned temporarily to Seattle So they're both leaving tomorrow to go do that. Um, so but they leave super early and um, like need to be at the airport at four o'clock kind of early and also um, the church uh, are specifically sort of directed families to not bring everyone to the airport just, you know, for safety's sake. So the kids are going to say goodnight, say goodbye tonight, and then Megan and I will take them tomorrow morning. Elijah's going to be going to bed. Oh, just... got Rona. No coughing allowed, <laughs> mister. Elijah is going to go to bed because they're waking up at in the threes, I guess. But we've, yeah, now's the time to say goodbye because Elijah's going to bed. All right, say goodbye. So everyone give Elijah a hug. This is it. It's a little different when they're not at the airport, but. <laughs> One year, 10 months. <laughs> Probably see Uncle Spencer. Maybe he'll go to the temple. With you. you can take, you can call. I don't have these. <laughs> hugs, hugs, hugs. <laughs> Yeah, let Elijah stand up.
<laughs> they share, they seem in the same room. All right, it's uh, only a few hours later, but it's the next day. It's, it's 3.31 a.m. And it's a mess, but it's also time for these two to be shipping out. Hey, Andrew. Time to go. Did you get any sleep? Huh? Did you get any sleep? I guess I'll huh. sleep back here. Good. Elijah, Elijah, were you able to sleep? What? Were you able to sleep? Yeah. That's good. I sleep like something. Oh. The only one loves us enough to wake up. <laughs> He also shares a room with you. I would have just been angry at you in a week. Yeah. See you in the end. Of the year. Have a good trip. Yep. One back. Then like. Ah, beat the car. Oh yeah. Okay, we're here, and um, you guys are probably wondering if Mom's gonna cry. I don't think so. Feels different this time. When Elijah left, it was like, I think I was really, really mourning the loss of like our family. Felt like we'll never be together again, and it'll never be the same. And I didn't know four months later Elijah would be home, and it would be exactly the same. <laughs> so I think I've gotten over that feeling that like it's over. It's just the beginning of the end. That's really what I felt last time, and I think I understand now. Like they're coming back. Might be in just a few months. One of them might break an arm and come home, you know, so um, I don't feel quite as emotional and I'm excited for them because they've both been in this limbo and can't, you know, probably a lot of people out there who have kids their age, you know, colleges got shut down and they can't work because a lot of, you know, they've come home and there's no jobs during the pandemic that are hiring or very few and so, um, I know that there are jobs, but for them, they knew they were leaving again. So I'm excited for them to be able to do their thing and live their life and have things they're excited about. And so I don't feel quite as emotional. And also, when Elijah left, I didn't know how it would be if we would talk to him very often and things like that. So um, I'm pretty, it, I realized after he was gone that it's pretty great because some of the times your kids at this age, at this age don't talk to you very much. Like, I mean, you talk to each other, but like, it was almost like you got one, like a couple good hours of conversation with them on their mission because you only talked to them that one day. So let's head in. I gotta put my mask on. Okay, I just getting his mask on. Okay. Yep. You can see who has a little bit more stuff than the other. <laughs> I just got a huge carry-on, a guitar, and two suitcases. And Daniel said he has two suitcases, and they're underweight. He doesn't have much stuff. So, different personalities. checked in and security is super busy right now so it might take a while to get through it all those people standing in line 
Enjoy this, boys. Yeah. You're not gonna. Wait, wait. Once you go past, yeah. you're done, man. We gotta say goodbye right here. This is it. Good luck, boys. You already hugged Daniel, I guess. I'm the life cat. It was free, so if I can't bring it. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Crazy. Talk to you later today. Yeah. See you later. They get to go with each other. Yeah, that's their good. their gates are right next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and they still make them walk back and forth. <laughs> <I know. laughs> there they go. We just got back from the airport and we're going to bed, going back to sleep. Um, but we're gonna end the video here. So thanks for coming along. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.